Oh, sorry. Hey guys, Doc. So today I'm going to talk about bugs. That's one thing I'm going to focus on today. We're going to talk about mainly grubs and army worms, but I'll also mention termites. I'm then going to take you out and just, I've been shooting a lot of footage. I've been shooting a lot of footage out at the farm. We're doing the backyard reseed. We've got all kinds of stuff going on over there. So maybe after I talk about the grubs and bugs, I'll throw some of that footage up at the end. But uh, don't forget, we cover, the majority of this is covered extensively in the lawn guides. So, whether you have a Bermuda, Zoysia, or cool season lawn, you can go to freelawncareguide.com and there's links to the Bermuda guide, the Zoysia guide, and the cool season lawn guide. They each have their own website. There's nothing to download, there's no apps, we don't send you emails, just use them, bookmark them and use them, and it'll explain some of this in detail. But this time of year, I'm gonna warn you, this is the time of year where your bug problems start to really shine. So I would say, now I'm in Georgia, so we're warm. So in August and September is when you're really gonna to start to deal with army worms. You're gonna really start to see army. I guarantee you half of you have army worms, don't even know it. I'll tell you about how to check for that. Almost every single person watching this video has grubs in their lawn. The problem is, is, is it a problem for you? Do you need to treat it? I'll talk about that real quick. Um, I am doing a termite treatment out at the property. Uh, maybe I'll take you out. We're getting a real big shed, custom shed, barn shed made out there. And what I want to do is I wanted to treat it. So I put down, um, we, we, I will show you how we built up the shed bottom and I'll, how we treat, I'll treat it for uh, termicides. And we are going to do a 10 year termicide treatment around the house, but I'll do that next week. So first let's talk about army worms. So understand army worms, moss come into your lawn all summer, spring and summer long. They lay eggs, they lay a few hundred eggs, they turn into the army worms and then they start eating the grass. Army worms don't eat roots, they eat the actual grass. So they, they move across your lawn like an army, that's where they get the name, they move across your lawn like an army and they sort of eat. How do you test and how do you know? There's two methods I like to use. Number one, take a five gallon bucket full of water, put in about a tablespoon of Dawn, uh, just mix it up and then go to an area that you think you might have army worms and just slowly dump the whole bucket and let it flood, flood that area. And what you'll see and stare at it, and usually within five to 20 seconds, you'll see army worms wiggle up. They float up, it's actually really cool. So you can go do that, make a couple of buckets and test different areas and see if you have army worms come up. The other way that you can do this, uh, grab a bottle, one of those hose end bottles of triazicide uh, you can get it at Lowe's, they're really cheap, they're not that expensive. Um, and then in the late afternoon or early evening, just walk around to some areas in your yard that you think look a little bit weak and spray it, spray it, spray it around, and then come back in about five, 10, and 20 minutes and look. And you'll see ugh, army worms coming up. So that's a good indication that you need to do a full treatment. And I'll tell you the full treatment in a second. Now let's talk about grubs. So you guys know that we abandoned this yard for two months and it went absolutely to hell. I mean, the yard looked absolutely horrible. <laughs> and so I told you what we did is we scalped the yard down and we're gonna push the reset button and we're gonna start it over by feeding it. Now the front yard is looking fantastic, but I did find grubs out there. And how do I know I have grubs? Because my armadillos come out and they dig in the grass. For me, it's armadillos. Some people have skunks, but the armadillos come and they dig a little hole and they get the grubs. Now, Barb had hundreds of those holes, uh, what was it, last year or a year before, and I had to go over there and treat all her grub problems. And I know she's got grub problems again because I'm not treating her yard this year. And she's using True Green, I think it is, and they don't treat for bugs, I don't believe. So anyways, so I saw some grub damage, so I went ahead, I told Ryan, let's get the double kill, let's put the double kill down, and we did that treatment. Uh, the backyard, I may end up doing a reseed on this backyard. That's how bad, but the front yard's looking great. I'll show you that on my next video. But when you have grubs, you can put down the double kill product. Now the double kill this time of year, don't forget, you have a black beetle. The black beetle goes into your ground. It lays eggs. Those eggs become grubs. Those grubs then become um, little cocoons later on, and then they become beetles again but the grubs eat the roots of your grass, and that's why it's so damaging. Again, grubs don't eat the grass, they actually eat the roots, and that's why you have those big brown spots. Uh, big brown spots, the roots are just, they're clipped off, they're cut off, and it takes a long time to heal back. Uh, and the grubs are usually at the two to three inch depth. Now you can go and you can cut out a square and fold it back, and in the long guides I talk about this, 
folding it back and checking for grubs in certain areas. We did that across the street and we found a ton of grubs that way. Put down the double kill, water it, water it, water it, water it, because the double kill has to get down to the grubs to kill them. But this time of year, you can do a double, double-sided double treatment. Here's what I do. I come out with double kill, I'll put down the double kill, I'll come back out with triazicide, I'll spray the lawn with triazicide, and then I'll just leave it. I'll leave it for a period of about 24 hours. Then I'll go ahead and I'll start watering, watering, watering. Water it in, water it in. And what ends up happening is, the double kill will kill army worms while it's up top, and so will the triazicide, so you kill all your army worms. And then as everything moves down, you're gonna kill all your grubs. It's a one-time, real powerful punch this time of year that really works well and will solve those bug problems. So, just make sure, get the long guides. I talk about it extensively in there. Let me just go ahead and I'll show you what's happening out at the farm. I actually have some germination out there and just sort of run you around and show you some clips I made. Hope you enjoy. Doc. So, this is interesting. I got about seven of these trees. I'm gonna have a beaver skin hat this fall, obviously. I have a certified pond guy coming. Um, he's certified by the state of Georgia, and he'll be taking all these trees off this berm, which destroy berms, all the roots. And he has to do both sides, and then he has to repair the berm. So he's coming in about two months, so chew away, beavers. Are we gonna fog up today? That's better. <laughs> The lens is going to fog up because it's so hot and humid out here. So I put down a tall fescue mix here that is really, really shade tolerant. And I had ordered a hybrid Kentucky bluegrass um, a specialty line and it just didn't come in. And it finally came in yesterday. I'm like, dude, I'm, I've got little patches of germination out here. So... What I'm going to do is, this Kentucky Bluegrass Hybrid, the seed is so tiny. I mean, it's, it's almost like a Bermuda seed. So I'm going to come out here and I'm going to reseed this real quick. And I'm going to lightly, lightly, um, maybe have one of the guys drag a rake over this. Not to the point where I'm digging up my germination, but just sort of mixing this light seed in. Because, see this? I've got lots of germination over in this area. I do want to put some of this KBG out, hybrid. Uh, let me show you the tag on it and show you the seed. So I'm going to use my Chapin bag spreader. And the seed itself, let me just grab it right here. See how fine it is compared to like a fescue, which is really big. And without spilling this. It's a hybrid Kentucky bluegrass. Anyways, I can put a link to that. Go ahead and uh, put it all out. By the way, if you don't, these are really good. This is like, um, <clears throat> if you have really big areas, like when I go seed the fields with clover and whatever I'm going to seed it, but this is a really good little spreader. For something really, really fine, I'm going to put it on a two. And you can see, it has a pretty big spro pattern. All I'm going to do is grab my big, my big rake. And by the way, we came out this morning, we're getting ready to pour, pour some cement footings on top of this. This is for the new shed. This is massive. This is a 16 by 20 platform. This is 17 tons of gravel. Uh, and my guys came out here and built this frame. It's perfectly level. And then what we're going to do is we're going to mix up um, a concrete mix. And we're going to pour it just right on here, here, and here. Or we're going to lock up that gravel and that frame. We're going to do that in several spots here. I did it to my other shed without even the, uh, the concrete. And man, let me tell you what. It has not moved in six years. 
So where's, here's my big rake. Son of a bitch, that hurt. Oh, oh pickaxe right on the shin. So if you don't have one of these rakes, If you don't have one of these rakes, get one. Uh, get them at Lowe's, I think. They're not that expensive. But all I'm going to do is I am just going to basically just drag this whole area and just get the seed a little bit under, and then I'm going to start watering. I'm going to have to re-gravel this road. It's just part of farm life. <laughs> when you have gravel roads and you're doing construction work. But let me show you what I'm going to do. I took the skid steer yesterday and I cleaned out around my deep well. Now we had to drill a deep well 575 feet back here. So right now is just the head. So give you an idea, there's the head of the well. And then we're gonna, we're gonna trench 220, uh, a 220, 240 line in here and water line all the way back down to the house. But the way the house is laid out, and it has a crawl, three foot crawl space, I don't have a good place for my filtration system. So I want to put a well filtration, so I'm putting a Pentair uh, filtration system and then I need a, a good size pressure tank. So what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna have, I was just gonna take a shed, I was just gonna buy a little shed and pop it here, but I, my wife's like, oh, build something that looks like farmy. So I'll probably have Mark, I'm gonna find a pitcher and we're gonna build like a six by six or an eight by eight little shed here and put all that inside of it so i'll have my power i'll have my pump i'll have my filtration and my pressure tank all sitting here away from the house that'll work out nice another dumpster has been delivered as of yesterday we gotta fill that up with all this crap around here so we're busy and if you're wondering why my fingers are blue it's because this morning i got in the kayak and I went and put an algicide in the pond. My algae level is a little high and it's a copper based blue spray. So that was done. Now, my skid steer, they didn't pick it up Friday, which worked out well. And um, so Sunday, I came out here all day and let me show you what I did. Now you couldn't see that barn before, okay? Look at this. So what I did was, <laughs> hour after hour, I went over here, I put the teeth on the bucket down, and I just dragged this whole area, line by line, drag, drag, drag. Now, my guys are gonna come back and pick up all the crap that's in here, but you can see now that I have this completely open where this was all green growing up before. So I came this morning and I sprayed anything that was still green and living. And then, and then I've got, um, I forgot I had a tow behind spreader behind the shed at home. So I went and grabbed it. And as soon as I grabbed it, a whole bunch of wasps started flying out. There's a wasp nest in it. I had to spray it, but I brought it and I hooked it up to the UTV. And I had to go by, um, <clears throat> I had to go by Tractor Supply to pick up a few things. And they had a big old bag of Kentucky 31 tall fescue. So I grabbed it, it's like a 50 pound bag. So I'm gonna put it in the tow behind and I'm gonna go all through here and I'm gonna plant um, tall fescue back there. And my guys are gonna clean out. And what I can do is, is I can just go back there with like a bush hog and just cut it down. But instead of being weeds, it'll be all tall fescue. And uh, actually it'll look kind of nice. I'll just keep it as like a little field and keep it short. Ooh, so a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, you, you just don't understand. I got a, I've got so much work going on. We got the foundation for the shed that we just finished today. We put cement, sort of, we poured cement on all the corners, locked it in. I'll show you that in the next video. What else we got going on? Tomorrow morning, I got my tree guys coming back out. We're gonna take out about 30 more trees. We're gonna do some cleanup work. Gonna do a little bit of stump grinding. The next day I have the cable company coming out because there's never been cable run to this house. So they gotta run 
almost a thousand feet of cable down to this house so I have internet. I want to get that done before anything else is done. I had a fence quote done up. We're going to be doing um, a 48 inch sort of farm style fence with a wire, black wire mesh. Uh, I'll put that on video. <laughs> we got so much going on out there, it's crazy. Uh, pond repair guy is going to come do the berm. What else have I got? Uh, the shed is going to be delivered and installed on the 12th, I believe it is. So I'll put that on video. But let's get back to this lawn back here. The front lawn is recovering nicely. The back is really having a hard time. And I'm almost thinking about coming out here and doing a real heavy aeration, do a scarify, and come back out here with something like a Yukon and actually reseed. So I'm going to do an overseed back here on the lawn. Now you're going to want to watch that because you, if very seldom do you see me reseed sod, but because we let this grass go so long and it got so damaged, it might be fun to do it. I'll just do it for you guys. I don't really care. We eventually, hopefully this project will be done in November and we're going to move out to the farm and Ryan is going to be renting this place and we'll be taking care of this. But anyways, long story. Hit subscribe. We've got a lot coming up. Talk to you later. Doc. Mm -hmm.